There's usually one familiar face amongst the crowds at the weekend antiques bazaars in Jinan, the capital of East China's Shandong province. It's the face of 70-year-old Yu Ji Zhou, a tinker whose life is repairing antique Zersha teapots. Zersha teapots are dark red enameled pottery and considered to be one of the most elegant and expensive kinds of Chinese pottery. Yu Ji Zhou repairs the pottery using homemade tools. He's become a kind of celebrity at the bazaars, and many people have even traveled from other provinces to seek his help with the teapot repairs. It's a traditional handicraft. I like it very much. Look at this teapot. It's so beautiful. After a little repair work, it will be even more exquisite than before. Repairing this kind of crockery was once an ancient profession in China. The broken teapots are joined together using tiny little clamps, which create a unique work of art. Some collectors even break the teapots on purpose, and then seek a skilled tinker to create a wonderful new piece. But mending such teapots required time and patience. You said it can take more than 20 different processes to complete one teapot, and he can use as many as a hundred different tools to complete the intricate processes. First of all, I have to glue the many pieces together using tape. Then I tap the seams with a bronze hammer to make the joints look natural. After that, I drill a hole and insert the clamps. You said that the most important step is making the clamps, which require up to 11 processes. I need to beat the copper wire flat and then make shape of it using a knife. The size of the clamp differs according to the pots. Some can even be as small as 2 millimeters. They're usually made out of bronze, lead, or sometimes even silver or gold. Zershan teapots are very delicate. Some can be as thin as one millimeter. A master craftsman is able to create detailed and intricate designs after years of experience. I can only drill up to this point. If I continue, the hole will be too big. Yu has been passionate about this unique style of craft since he was a primary school student. He met a tinker who was mending bowls on the street. Yu was so impressed that he started to bring the tinker broken plates from home and watched as he created new pieces with the broken parts. I would just sit and watch the tinker while he worked. I was so engrossed with what he was doing that sometimes I would even miss lunch. Despite his passion for the art, Yu didn't start to work as a professional tinker until his retirement. Now I have so many pieces I'm working on. It takes so much time. Some customers are in a hurry, but I tell them they need to wait. Otherwise, I cannot guarantee the very best quality. In Yu's workshop is a six-story shelf, which holds collections of teapots sent from across the country. I have customers in Beijing, Shenzhen and even Hainan. Some of them learn about me on the internet and others heard about me from friends. Some of the teapots sent to you are worth millions of yuan. Others have been broken into more than 50 pieces. Yu aims to repair around 100 pots each month, which earns him an income of about 5,000 yuan. Yu says more people are now learning to appreciate the value of the Zersha teapots. Yu is delighted to find that his son has shown an interest in the ancient art. He's been training with Yu for the past 15 years. I want to help protect and promote this ancient art. I would really hate to see it disappear in the future. Yu is now considering ways in which he can promote the craftsmanship across the country. As far as I know, none of the Mendi enamel potteries are currently on display in any museums in China. I'm wondering whether it might be a good idea to make some pieces and donate them free to the museums. This way, perhaps more people will get to know the Zisha teapots.